Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for the release of the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedoms, or USERF's 2024 Annual Report. I'm Abraham Cooper, and I've been honored to chair the commission over this past year. Today, USERF is pleased to release its 25th Annual Report marking 25 years since the passage of the International Religious Freedom Act, or IRFA, which created USERF as an independent bipartisan US advisory body. USERF is dedicated to promoting the universal right to freedom of religion or belief abroad. Under IRFA, the commission issues a report by May 1st each year. The report offers an overview of religious freedom conditions in key countries and highlights important global trends relating to religious freedom during calendar year 2023. It also sets forth our recommendations to the U.S. President, Secretary of State, members of Congress on what the federal government can do to highlight violations, promote accountability, and inspire positive change. I would also add that uh, we also publish a list of prisoners who are held in, every, in various countries around the world due to their religious beliefs. <clears throat> All chapters in the report are approved by a majority vote and reflect the views of a bipartisan group of commissioners from different religious, political, and professional backgrounds. Each commissioner under the statute has the option to include a statement representing his or own or her own individual views. This year, several of us commissioners included individual or dissenting views in the chapters on the implementation of IRFA, the nations of Azerbaijan, and Communist China. Key findings, recommendations, and analysis for each country chapter represent insights and information that USERF gained through hearings, fact-finding trips, independent research, and meetings with government officials, non-government organizations, independent human rights advocates, and religious communities. Before moving into the content of USERF's 25th annual report, I'd like to take a moment to thank my fellow commissioners for their unwavering and inspirational commitment to advancing religious freedom. I would also like to thank the members of our professional staff for their phenomenal work throughout the year and their substantial efforts in preparing this year's report. Each annual report is the culmination of a team effort involving each member of USERF staff, as well as our outside copy editor, Erin Mulligan, and our report designer from the government publishing office, Jamie Harvey. Their combined effort made today's release possible. Before I turn the floor over to Vice Chair Davey, I wanna recognize two people, First, I believe on behalf of all the commissioners to thank our dedicated, devoted, and long-suffering executive director, uh, Aaron Singh Chun-Suk, who is an absolute inspiration uh, as she's been able to guide the various uh, and uh, very different personalities and help mold us into the effective group that we are. Aaron, we, we're so grateful for your continuing leadership and wish you well and your team uh, for the coming year and for many years to come. And as I turn the floor over to Vice Chair Davey, I want to say it has been a true privilege to serve alongside him this past year. During our recent trip to Saudi Arabia, Vice Chair Davey not only stood by me when Saudi officials asked me to remove my kippah in public, he made clear that he is committed to standing up for all individuals facing religious freedom restrictions, restrictions no matter their religion or belief. 
He is a wonderful friend and a true mensch. It's now my honor for the last time to turn the floor over to our distinguished vice chair, Fred Davey. Thank you, Chair Cooper, and thank you for your leadership. Um, and as for the uh, extremely unfortunate and very painful incident in uh, Saudi Arabia, um, there was never any other choice uh, for me but to stand with our chair and to make sure that everyone understood that we were there uh, in solidarity with each other, committed to freedom of religion or belief. Uh, highly ironic that that really terrible situation should have occurred uh, given the mission that we were on. But you provided extraordinary leadership uh, for uh, this commission uh, over the last year and for the two years you've been uh, been on the commission. Uh, you provided expert leadership on that mission and um, I could do no other, uh, but uh, be with you, to stand with you, uh, and uh, to just be a partner uh, and a friend uh, in that very uh, unfortunate circumstance. So uh, I, I, you're an inspiration, and it was a, it was a, it was a easy decision uh, to make. Uh, so thank you, thank you for your leadership, and greetings to all. The annual report's primary focus is on two groups of countries, those that USERF recommends the State Department designate as countries of particular concern, or CPCs, and those that USERF recommends the State Department place on, special on its special watch list, or SWL. Under IRFA, CPCs are countries whose governments engage in or tolerate systematic, ongoing and egregious violations of religious freedom. The SWL is for countries where the violations meet two, but not all three of the systematic, ongoing and egregious tests for CPC status. This year, our report covers 28 countries. Based on 2023 conditions, we recommend 17 of these countries for CPC status, including the 12 that the State Department designated as CPCs in December 2023. Those are Burma, China, Cuba, Eritrea, Iran, Nicaragua, North Korea, Pakistan, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Tajikistan, and Turkmenistan. In addition, USERF recommends that the State Department designate five countries as CPCs. They are Afghanistan, Azerbaijan, India, Nigeria, and Vietnam. Azerbaijan is a new CPC recommendation for USERF this year, compared, compared to last year's SWL recommendation. We recommend the State Department maintain special watch lists uh, on its special watch list, one country, Algeria, and add 10 countries to the list. Egypt, Indonesia, Iraq, Kazakhstan, Kyr Kyrgyzstan, Malaysia, Sri Lanka, Syria, Turkey, and Uzbekistan. Kyrgyzstan is a new SWL recommendation for USERF this year. In addition, we recommend for redesignation as entities of particular concern, or EPCs, the following seven non-state actors, Al-Shabaab, Boko Haram, Hayat, Tahrir, Hasham, the Houthis, Islamic State Sahel Province, Islamic State in West Africa Province, Jamaat Nusral Islam Wal Musulim. To meet the legal standard for designation as an EPC, a group must engage in particularly severe violations of religious freedom be outside the control of, sovereign, of a sovereign government, exercise significant political power and territorial control, and often employ violence in pursuit of its objectives. Before I ask Commissioner Frank Wolf to speak, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the work of the commission. As my time as a commissioner is coming to an end, 
I'm grateful to have had the opportunity to not only work with the most dynamic team members at USURF, but to also meet so many brave individuals fighting for religious freedom for themselves and others. The work of the commission is nonstop, and we, mo we owe much of its creation to Commissioner Wolf. He, along with others in Congress, saw the need for an independent ag agency to unflinchingly report on foreign governments committing religious freedom violations. We are fortunate and grateful for Commissioner Wolf's vision to protect individuals' inalienable rights outlined in the U Universal Declaration of Human Rights and belief that the right to freedom of religion of thought, conscious, and religion needed greater emphasis in U.S. policy. I would like to ask Commissioner Wolf to talk about the front cover of the annual report this year and its significance. I turn the floor, the floor now over to a one that our chair has often called our moral GPS, someone for whom I have great respect, former Congressman and now Commissioner Frank Wolf. And Commissioner Wolf, I think you are on mute. Thank you much, uh, Chair, uh, Vice Chair Davey. I'm very grateful for your comments. So thank you. And I want to thank all the, all the, the, the commissioners. As Chair Cooper mentioned, <clears throat> October 27, 23, marked the 25th anniversary of the enactment of IRFA. This landmark law made promoting the internationally guaranteed right to freedom of religion or belief a priority in U.S. foreign policy. It established the U.S. Department of State's ambassador at large, an office for international religious freedom, and USERF. It also required monitoring and reporting and created consequences for the worst violators and incorporated religious freedom concerns into U.S. bilateral and multilateral di diplomacy programs, training, and also refugee and asylum policies. Both as a member of Congress at the time of IRFA's passage, and my current service at IRFA, it has been an honor to working with so many individuals dedicated to advancing religious freedom. Religious freedom has always been a bipartisan issue. I want to say it again. Religious freedom has always been a bipartisan issue. And Republicans and Democrats came together back in the late 90s to do something about it. Senator Lieberman, Senator Nichols, and Senator Dan Coats were all very, very important to making religious freedom a priority for U.S. foreign policy. The fact is, the last hour of the Congress, Dan Coats, Senator Coates, saved the bill from, from failing. In fact, many people do not realize these people literally together in a bipartisan way saved the legislation. Now it is critical that Congress make USERF permanent. Congress must make USERF permanent and provide greater funding to keep its promises to the world that religious freedom is a universal right and one that the United States is committed to advancing on behalf of all. With that, I want to reiterate again, this is a bipartisan issue, and I would encourage Republican and Democratic members to come together travel to a country where religious persecution is taking place and experience it together to see the importance of USERP's work so they can come back in a bipartisan way and work together on protecting this universal God-given right. In honor of this important anniversary, the cover of this year's annual report is a collage of cover images from previous USERP's annual reports. Those covers, and the underlying reports have documented both the persecution and the progress that USERF has seen in countries around the globe and over the past quarter century. Unfortunately, some egregious situations have remained constant and even in some cases even worsened. And several countries with periods of notable progress have regressed. And at the same time, there's been many important successes my fellow commissioners will highlight some of these situations in a forthcoming report. Nevertheless, 25 years after IRFA's passage, various state and non-state actors continue to perpetuate or tolerate severe religious persecution. 
In too many countries, individuals and communities continue to suffer for their religious beliefs, activities, or identity, or for their religious freedom advocacy. Those individual communities are why IRFA was enacted. They're also why the U.S. government's effort to promote freedom of religion or belief for all in partnership with like-minded governments, parliamentarians, non-governmental organizations remain essential today and in the future. I will now pass the floor over to Commissioner Gelman, who will highlight several of our key recommendations to the Biden administration and Congress to advance religious freedom worldwide. She will also discuss the implementations of some of the previous recommendations for 2023. And in closing, I, I want to thank all of the commissioners. God bless you all. You've really all done a great job, and I've been impressed to know you, to work with you. May the Lord bless you, and may the Lord bless all the staff who has done an outstanding job. I now pass this over to Commissioner Gilman. Thank you, Commissioner Wolf. And before I discuss, discuss some key use of recommendations uh, for 2023, I want to add my thanks to Chair Cooper, Vice Chair Davey, to you, Commissioner Wolf, as was just mentioned, our moral GPS, and to all my fellow commissioners, those of you who are leaving the commission, it's been such a pleasure working with you, and I've learned so much from all of you. And I also want to echo Commissioner Wolf's comments about our amazing and outstanding staff. So with that, I would like to first note some key USERF recommendations that the United States government implemented in 2023. USERF has consistently called on the U.S. government to increase the use of targeted human rights sanctions to impose asset freezes and or visa bans on individuals and entities for severe religious freedom violations, citing specific abuses. The Biden administration did so throughout the year. For example, the U.S. government sanctioned Nicaraguan judicial officials who falsely convicted Bishop Rolando Alvarez for treason, Iranian officials responsible for violence against demonstrators protesting for greater religious freedom, Taliban officials carrying out religiously inspired repression of the rights of women and girls, and Chinese officials who forcibly separate Tibetan children from their families and seek to eliminate religious traditions in Tibet. The administration also continued to pursue multilateral engagement on religious freedom abroad, including through the International Religious Freedom or Belief Alliance and at the United Nations. USERF recommended that Congress highlight international religious freedom issues through legislation, hearings, briefings, and other actions. Some notable congressional actions over the course of 2023 included hearings on the dire state of religious freedom around the world, the crisis facing women and girls in Afghanistan, the Nicaraguan government's persecution of the Catholic Church, and anti-Semitism in Europe. Congress also introduced resolutions supporting USERF's recommendation that Nigeria and India be designated as CPCs. USERF is pleased to see this evidence of the ongoing commitment to and fulfillment of IRFA by successive administrations and Congress. Nevertheless, we continue to believe that the US government can do more to address the most egregious abuses. For example, we continue to urge the administration to use the CPC designation tool more effectively. Too many of the State Department's CPC countries are repeatedly named as such each year, but the designations result in little to no substantive change. Accordingly, we recommend that the State Department implement meaningful consequences on violator governments when it names its CPCs. For example, it should not reissue the longstanding waivers based on other U.S. interests that have so far allowed the governments of Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Tajikistan, and Turkmenistan to avoid penalties for their abuses. Furthermore, we recommend the administration continue to increase its use of targeted human rights sanctions against specific religious freedom violators. We also encourage the Biden administration to coordinate with other countries with similar sanctions regimes 
on such targeted sanctions whenever possible. Among the recommendations that USERF makes to Congress in this year's annual report, we urge it to hold oversight hearings on U.S. EARF policy. We also recommend that individual members of Congress advocate for religious prisoners of conscience through the Tom Lantos Human Rights Commission's Defending Freedoms Project. Bipartisan support in Congress for, for religious freedom worldwide is a powerful driver of U.S. leadership on this important issue. Members of Congress continuing to shed light on egregious restrictions on freedom of religion or belief helps ensure that America's commitment to international religious freedoms remains strong. I will now turn it over to Commissioner Curry to discuss a country we are closely monitoring, India. Thank you, Commissioner Gelman and my other uh, fellow commissioners appreciate your comments. This year, USERF is again recommending a designation of country of particular concern for India. In 2023, the Indian government at the national, state, and local levels continued to promote and enforce religious nationalist policies. This includes restrictions on citizenship, religious conversion, interfaith marriage, and cow slaughter. These laws and policies negatively impact Muslims, Christians, Sikhs, Dalits, and indigenous and scheduled tribal people. They've also created a culture of impunity for nationwide campaigns of harassment and violence, particularly towards Muslims and Christians. In India's northeastern state of Manipur alone, violent clashes between ethnic Hindu Mai Tai and Christian Kuki communities resulted in the destruction of more than 500 churches and two synagogues and the displacement of over 70,000 people. During the year, several mosques were destroyed in the presence of police and hate speech against Muslims continued at an alarming rate ahead of national elections, contributing to vigilante violence. The national government also increasingly sought to silence dissenting voices, particularly of religious minorities and those advocating for them, both within and beyond India's borders. Domestically, Indian authorities continued to arrest activists and students peacefully protesting the discriminatory legislation like the Citizens Amendment Act. The Indian government also extended harmful practices abroad to target activists, journalists, and academics. The most extreme example is outlined in the U.S. Justice Department's November indictment alleging that the Indian government it was involved in the assassination attempt on a Sikh American resident in New York, echo echoing similar accusations by the Canadian government regarding an assassination in Canada. We are deeply disappointed that the State Department did not recognize India as a CPC, a country of particular concern, in 2023, despite the country clearly meeting the standards under IRFA. We urge the State Department to do so this year. I'd now like to turn to Commissioner Schneck to discuss some of the new recommendations that USERF has made this year. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Curry. Uh, though many of the countries we report on are long-time violators of religious freedom, it is important to note countries where conditions have changed or worsened. I would like to highlight three countries uh, with new recommendations. First, in Syria, the government's violations of religious freedom have evolved to become more political and administrative in nature in recent years including in 2023. As a result, USERF is now recommending that country for special watch list placement for its severe religious freedom violations rather than the CPC designation. However, non-state actors in conflict with the Syrian regime continue to perpetuate particularly severe violations in that country. This is especially true of Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, or HTS, which Yusuf continues to recommend for 
EPC designation. In 2023, HTS continued to forcibly impose its interpretation of Sharia in uh, Idlib and other parts of the Northwest, including enforcement via detention and alleged torture. In addition, Turkish-backed organizations engaged in checkpoint harassment, detention, torture, rape, and armed attacks against vulnerable, group, uh, against vulnerable groups, including religious minorities. They also intentionally destroyed mosques and Yazidi shrines. Second, Yusuf is recommending for the first time that Azerbaijan be designated as a country of particular concern. Yusuf previously re recommended the country for special watch list status since 2020 and included it on Yusuf's tier two for serious concerns there for many years prior to that. In our 2022 and 2023 annual reports, we noted increasing religious freedom violations by the government of Azerbaijan. Regrettably, this trend continued during 2023 leading USERF to conclude that the CPC designation, country of particular concern, had now been met. <clears throat> USERF documented a significant and alarming increase in the number of prisoners arrested on the basis of religion or belief in Azerbaijan during the year. In addition, authorities are regularly accused of torturing or threatening sexual violence to elicit false confessions from detainees, with those per perpetrating such violence facing no uh, accountability. Lastly, Yusuf is recommending Kyrgyzstan for SWL status, special watch list, for the first time based on the government's heightened religious repression. In 2023, Kyrgyz authorities increasingly enforced long-standing restrictive legislation regulating religion and penalizing peaceful religious practices such as online religious expression, collective worship, and possessing unauthorized religious materials. The government particularly targeted Muslims who practice a form of Islam that deviates from the state's preferred interpretation, labeling them as extremist, foreign, or non-traditional. Peaceful religious groups are included on an official list of extremist, quote unquote, extremist groups and authorities regularly penalize alleged members of such groups through arrests, detainments, and forced renunciations of faith. Now, if I may take a personal moment, I too would like to thank the extraordinary staff of uh, USER for its uh, diligence and hard work in putting together this, uh, this report today. I would also like to note that five commissioners will be leaving the commission in a few weeks. Chair Cooper, Vice Chair Davey, former Congressman Frank Wolf, and my colleagues, Nuri Kurtel and Iman Mohammed Majid. These gentlemen will be sorely missed for their expertise, their passionate concerns for freedom of religion or belief, and for their bipartisan efforts to advance the important work of USERF. At a moment when freedom of religion or belief is under extraordinary pressure around the world, I have been incredibly grateful to stand shoulder to shoulder with these colleagues, these friends, and I pray for their every success going forward. Thank you. And I will now turn it over to Commissioner Turkel to talk about China and transnational repression. Thank you very much, Commissioner Schneck. In addition to perpetuating religious freedom violations within their own countries, several governments engage in transnational repression to silence religious minorities and their advocates abroad. These governments use intimidation, harassment, and violence to target political and human rights activists, journalists, and member of, members of religious and ethnic minority groups living outside their boundaries or borders. In extreme cases, tactics include detention, reprisals against family members, kidnapping, and even assassinations. China is the world's most sophisticated and far-reaching perpetuator of national, uh, transnational repression. In 2023, the Chinese government has continued to target diaspora ethnic and religious communities with ties to China, including Uyghurs, Tibetans, Christians, 
Falun Gong practitioners in countries such as the United States, Japan, South Korea, Turkey, and Thailand. For example, China operates over 100 overseas police stations in at least 53 countries. In April 2023, the United States Department of Justice arrested and charged two individuals in connection with operating an illegal Chinese overseas police station in New York City. In addition to its transnational repression activities, the Chinese government continues to egregiously repress religious freedom within China. As the report documents, China persists in its genocide against Uyghur Muslims, subjecting them to arbitrary detention, imprisonment, forced labor, political indoctrination, mass surveillance, intrusive government homestays, forced interfaith and interethnic marriages, forced sterilization, and forced abortion. China also severely restricts religious freedom for Tibetan Buddhists as well as members of Christian communities, Falun Gong and the Church of Almighty God. Also, the Chinese government and its state-affiliated entities have hired former U.S. officials, and former members of Congress to lobby on their behalf, undermining religious freedom and relating human rights in China. Yusuf recommends that members of Congress support legislation to counter China's malign influence in the United States, particularly through such a lobbying efforts. Before turning the floor to Commissioner Yulin, I also wanted to share some personal reflection about my time uh, with the commission in the past four years. Four years ago, as an immigrant to this great nation, I had a privilege of being appointed by then House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to serve in this incredibly important US government agency. She had two specific objectives, one to elevate the Uyghur cause and two build a bipartisan consensus in US, US Congress that resulted in passing two major legislation, the Uyghur Human Rights Policy Act and the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act. Being in a commission was not just an honor for me. It was a living testament to American ideal of opportunity. Working alongside of my fellow commissioners, we tackled some of the world's most pressing religious freedom challenges. But the most profound experience came in the summer of 2022, when I was entrusted with the responsibility of serving as chair of this incredible commission. Leading user was a humbling experience. As an immigrant, former asylum applicant, came to this country escaping communism. It allowed me to, it allowed me not to only advocate for the rights of the persecuted, but also to witness unwavering commitment of our dedicated policy step, led by our executive director, Aaron Xingxin Sok. My time at USERF has been a journey of immense personal and professional growth. It is a story that could only happen in America. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. This is not just an ending, it's a new beginning. I leave you served with a renewed sense of purpose and a deep commitment to continuing the fight for international religious freedom. With that, I will pass the floor to Commissioner Yuland to speak about Nigeria. And thank you very much. Mr. Turkle, thank you very much, especially for those moving words. We all very much appreciate your example and your leadership, and certainly the personal challenges that you have faced, both as an immigrant, as now an American citizen, and certainly as a member of the commission, especially given your mother's situation. We all have constantly urged American officials to stand up for her, and we've all kept her in our prayers. And in that way, your service and your leadership, much as Frank your service and your leadership and your blessing. Abe and Fred, your incredible chairmanship and vice chairmanship this year. And Commissioner Majid, every time you speak, giving us words of wisdom and advice and counsel that we all take. It's been a real privilege for me to serve alongside all of you, along with watching and benefiting from the energetic and capable staff here at USERF. When it comes to Nigeria, USERF has been seized of focus on that country, especially in 2023. We continue to see deteriorating religious freedom conditions there, including mass violence, killings, 
and the enforcement of blasphemy laws. The State Department had rightly designated Nigeria as a country of particular concern in 2020, an action USERP has recommended since 2009. But in 2021, 2022, and again disappointingly in 2023, the State Department chose not to designate Nigeria as a CPC. It did not even place Nigeria on its special watch list. But central government failure, state level government repression, and religiously motivated violence by non-state actors have turned parts of Nigeria into areas of extreme persecution, particularly in the North. We found it hardening that the State Department did continue to designate Boko Haram, an Islamic state in West Africa province, as entities of particular concern for the reign of terror they have unleashed on religious communities. However, that designation does not account for the imprisonments and mob violence for alleged blasphemy, the mass killings, including killings of many Christians in Nigeria's Middle Belt, and the consistent failure of the Nigerian government to prevent or punish widespread violence impacting religious freedom in Nigeria. Yusuf maintains that the country should return to CPC status in 2024. Yusuf also recommends the appointment of a special envoy for Nigeria and the Lake Chad Basin to oversee U.S. efforts to promote greater religious freedom in Nigeria and throughout the region. I would also like to take a moment to acknowledge worsening religious freedom conditions in Nicaragua. USERF recommended Nicaragua for CPC status this year, last year, for the very first time. The situation for people of faith has only continued to deteriorate in 2023, and we are again recommending the country for CPC designation this year. The Nicaraguan government, led by President Daniel Ortega and Vice President Rosario Murillo, arbitrarily arrests, imprisons, and expels clergy and lay people. The most prominent example is Bishop Rolando Alvarez, who was sentenced to 26 years imprisonment on spurious charges in February 2023 and exiled to the Vatican in January of this year. In addition, the Nicaraguan government in December 2023 arrested 11 pastors associated with the Christian ministry Mountain Gateway on spurious money laundering charges. In March of this year, each pastor received prison sentences ranging between 12 and 15 years behind bars. In addition, lay people have been arrested and imprisoned on spurious charges on the basis of their faith. The Nicaraguan government also systematically and relentlessly targets religious organizations it views as opponents, particularly Catholic charitable and educational organizations. The worsening behavior of the regime in Managua deserves strong, strong condemnation. I will now turn it over to Commissioner Majid, who will discuss the implications armed conflicts have on religious sites, as well as USERF's concern about the rise of anti-Semitism and anti-Muslim hatred. Commissioner. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Yulin. Uh, and thank you for the kind words. Um, me too, uh, I'm leaving the commission after being have privileged to work with this wonderful people here, uh, my fellow commissioners and amazing staff. Uh, it has been a great experience uh, to work in this commission and to be part of it. And, uh, you know, the myself an immigrant from Sudan, and I really appreciate what this country have offered me and, and many people like me um, to be able to practice religion freely in this beautiful land. International humanitarian laws protects place of worship and other religious sites from being targeted or destroyed. We have seen recently in three examples where this had not been upheld. For example, 
in Sudan, the fighting in Sudan now between the uh, Sudanese uh, army and uh, rabbit forces resulted in attacking a Coptic Christian churches in Wad Madani and also have resulted in destruction of 12 mosques and killing of five civilians. In Russia, we have seen the destruction of six handed religious institutions and other religious objects. And also we have seen Burma, the military have destroyed approximately 20 hundred religious sites, including Buddhist place of worship and churches and mosques. Also, uh, we have seen the rising, Yusuf have been observing that the rising of anti-Semitism and 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 uh, hatred against Muslims or anti-Muslim hatred in 2023. This is especially after the attack of Hamas on October 7 in Israel and the response of Israel to it. And that have led to the harassment of a uh, member of Jewish community and the Muslim communities being blamed with the act of because of Hamas and the response of the government of Israel. We have seen this, uh, the Jews uh, being uh, wearing their symbols, Yamaka being attacked or uh, being harassed in universities, in public schools, as well as Muslims, students. We uh, asked the government, our government in America to raise this issue with European government as well and around the globe where they seeing the anti-Semitism and Islamophobia and anti-Muslims on the rise. Now I'll return it back to my chairman. Chair Cooper, you need to unmute yourself. Yes, isn't it refreshing to be able to mute clergy every now and then? I'm going to miss that. But I'm also going to miss uh, Imam's amazing smile and also add a personal note because we talk about 28 countries, but when we talk about China, we think of Nuri's mother. When we speak about Sudan and the utter uh, absurdity of the return of genocidal hate and violence in that country, we think and pray for Imam Majid's family, some of whose members have been killed. Um, the, if it sounds like it's personal, uh, it is. We certainly hope that those of you watching this presentation, more importantly, reading the USERF uh, report, uh, won't be disheartened but rather will be energized to make a difference. And I also know because each of our commissioners has been involved either in discussions with ambassadors, media from overseas, or when we travel overseas, the first question is, who are you as Americans to point the finger at us when you have so much hate and so much religious uh, hatred and targeting of minorities in your own country? It's a fair question. It's something that we each will grapple with every day, but we can also point to the fact that as the world's greatest democracy, the way in which we deal with hate is we confront it. We don't sweep it under the rug. We don't make believe it isn't there. So thank you again uh, to my fellow commissioners for their insights, for their commitment, and for all of you, for your interest in USERF's 2024 annual report. The full report is available on our website at www.usurf.gov. Thank you and God bless.